Before I start the video, I would like to share this book I made last year on derivatives. It's one of my most passionate projects and it would mean the world if you checked it out. What is the first derivative test and what is the second derivative test? The first derivative test is what it sounds like, using the first derivative of a function. What does it determine though? It determines whether a function increases and decreases as well as its critical points. What are critical points in derivatives? Critical points in derivatives are simply to say when the derivative is equal to zero. We know that the derivative is the rate of change of a tangent line at a specific point. So that means if the derivative is equal to zero, it means that the rate of change is zero, meaning that the tangent line is horizontal. The same applies to determine if a function increases or decreases. If the derivative is positive at a point, then it increases because a positive slope means it's increasing. And if a derivative is negative at a point, it decreases because a negative slope means it's decreasing. So in summary, the first derivative test gives us where the function increases, decreases, and neither. Which again makes sense, since the derivative is the rate of change. So now let's talk about the second derivative test. The second derivative test is what it sounds like. It uses the second derivative. But what does it determine? First, we need to understand what the second derivative test gives us. The second derivative of a function gives us its concavity. What is concavity? You can think of concavity as the rate of change of the first derivative since it's taking the derivative of the first derivative. So it's the same concept as the first derivative test, but with different reliances. But essentially, concave up is when an original function's curve is facing upwards, and concave down is when a graph's curve is facing downwards. So when the second derivative equals positive, it is concave up. And when the second derivative equals negative, it is concave down. Seems familiar? And it's important to note concavity is purely based on curves. This is why the second derivative of linear functions is just zero. But this doesn't necessarily mean that concavity doesn't exist when the second derivative is just zero. So then what if the output of the second derivative was zero? If the second derivative was zero, it would be called a point of inflection, which is the point at which the concavity changes, not when the function changes from increasing to decreasing. So if you've noticed this, this is very similar to the first derivative test, but it just relies on different things. But to put it simply, first derivative test relies on the output of the first derivative, Second derivative test relies on the output of the second derivative. Here's a visual demo. So here we have Desmos. Let's say that we have a function x to the power of 4. Now, what's the derivative of x to the power of 4? Let that, well that's 4x to the power of 3. Now, if we look here, using the first deriv te derivative test, if we plug in a value when x is like negative, for instance, then we're going to get a negative value. And that makes sense because the function is decreasing when x is negative. Now, if we look on the other side of this function, we can see that if we plug in uh, a positive x value into our first derivative, we're going to get a positive answer. And that makes sense because in the original function, the graph is increasing. And like I said before, for the first derivative test, if the first derivative test equals positive, then the original function is going to be increasing and then vice versa for the negative side. And if it's zero, it's neither increasing or decreasing. So let's now take the second derivative of the original function, which is going to be the derivative of 4x to the power of 3, which is 12x to the power of 2. So if we look here, we can see that when 12x to the power of 2 is, if we plug in like a negative x value into the second derivative, we get a positive value. And that makes sense because, like I said, for the second derivative of the test, if the answer is positive, then it's going to be concave up, which it is. Now, if we look on the other side of positive x, if we plug in a positive x value into our second derivative, we still get a positive answer, which makes sense because for original function, it's still concave up. 